It's been a while, I feel like. Maybe. Yes. It's been like two weeks because we did not record last week because we were both had a rough, rough, rough week. Was it a, had an emotional breakdown. School was terrible. It was like, hello. School was terrible yesterday, Dude, if I'm school, be honest. Yeah, school has been rough. This whole like online shit is not it's my... not working well. No. I'm like, what the hell? Like They're like, uh, you know... Well, let's just not do anything for four weeks after spring break, and let's just assign everything the two weeks before school gets out. Dude, I'm going to be honest. I turned in an essay that was due two weeks ago what, did last you really? night. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. What did your professor say? Didn't say anything. Did the, Is there no deduction or anything? I don't think so, because he, like, sent out, like, an email and stuff. He's like, I'll still let you guys turn in stuff until, like, may 1st at like midnight because honestly of the pandemic i've been taking full vein into this whole pandemic thing i've just been like i'm so stressed out i can't turn my lie, spent most of my time watching anime yeah like like this is a weeb's dream like yeah it's honestly true. the amount of anime i've watched in the past week couple weeks like i've watched what we talked about this a little bit last time but i've watched given monthly girl nizaki khan which is what our review is for today Kun. khan Coon. Con. <laughs> senpai? God, I'm, girl like, senpai? I'm gonna hit you with the coon if you don't say it. <laughs> like an actual raccoon? <laughs> no, I'm gonna hit you with the word coon. <laughs> <laughs> you're just like like exactly like you did like, in the anime and they're just no, like No, I'm gonna tattoo it on your forehead. That's what I'm gonna, gonna do. <laughs> okay. Shave off your eyebrows and put Nozaki coon. <laughs> just like right there. It's fine. All right. Hello, guys. This is Maddie here with my co-host, Mo, and we are the Bingers Anime Edition podcast, where we just talk about animes and give some general reviews, some music recommendations, just a little bit of anything that, about weeb culture, and just share that with you guys for, you know, your dull, monotonous days, and see wherever you're going to start with your next show. So, do, Mo, do you want to kind of describe a little bit about what we do here? Yeah, definitely. If you haven't been here before, thank you for tuning in. Oh, yes. Thank you so much. We couldn't do this without you guys. Yeah. Uh, welcome. My name's Mo. I am the other half of Bingers. Anime edition. Anime edition. AKA Bay. I'm trying to get the stick. So we're going to just refer to ourselves as Bay. You've come up with all these nicknames. Bay, Benji's. I'm here for it. Okay. You know, I'm just like, I'm crying. It. Like, I, I'm having fun with this. I've, go I've gone out the deep end. It's pretty bad. Yeah. It's unhealthy, but I like it, you know? It's fun. But yeah, I think our goal is just to have fun talking about anime, you know? I don't think that we have, like, any need to, like... We're not professionals, you know? Oh, by no means. By we, no means. We are, we are not professional critics. We are amateur critics. weebs looking at anime. Oh, yeah, for sure. And I mean, it's thinking just... Thinking that we know shit. <laughs> we know nothing. We are just close-minded. We've been in our little happy mainstream world. We haven't seen much, but... Closed-minded Southern, like Oklahoma. Southern. Southern? <laughs> Are those people from Saturn? <laughs> southern, like Oklahoma. Yeah, just oh us my Oakies. southern accent. Comes I know out it when came I say out Oklahoma. So bad. <laughs> yeah, I people say I have an accent. I really don't feel like I do. I have like weird speech things and don't know you how to have spell. A lisp, but yeah, I can't say my ths at all. I can't say my name. I say Matthew. <laughs> I don't say, I can't pronounce a TH pronunciation. So like earth, yeah, it's bad. <laughs> when I took earth science in eighth grade, I got, I got on my, okay, y'all listen to this. On my, like in freshman year of college, not freshman year of college, freshman year of high school, God, so long ago, I had a friend group. I thought they were friends. They are not friends. I'm sorry if you're listening to this. You can message me individually, but you're not, but they gave me a shirt for my birthday, for my birthday, that said Earth Day with an F, and they made this shirt. I still have this shirt because it was good quality and I would just sleep in it. I was so upset about it. And then they were like, why are you so ungrateful? We spent time on this. I'm like, you're making fun of me. Of course I'm ungrateful about this shit. I'm fine. I'm just done. I can't. I'm like dying. <laughs> <laughs> it just it made me so mad. I'm like, why would you give this to me? Guys, you don't give people birthday presents that make fun of them. I'm sorry. Every time you say birthday. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> uh. All I can think of is with, 
like an F instead of a G. I literally, when I was on the bowling team in high school, man, I just sound so lame. I had a girl, whenever we like make our team names, she would put Matthew with a PH. What the fuck? Like, why would you do that? I was like, Matthew. And I'm like, why? Why would you put that on the like the bowling alley lane where my name would be, you know? My mouth hurts so bad right now. I'm smiling so Why? <laughs> it's awful. Okay. Yeah, if someone has a lisp or they can't say their THs, don't make fun of them. Public service announcement. I'm sorry. That's my little rant for today. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Do you want to crack into this? You just want to get to Monthly Girl Senpai? Senpai? <laughs> you want to get into Monthly Girl Nazaki Khan? Kyan? Khan? Monthly Girl? <laughs> God damn it! That happened. Okay, okay. Mo focus. <laughs> we need to go. Sorry, guys. We're gonna just insert. You're literally crying. <laughs> I'm literally crying. We're gonna insert like a little little ditty here, just like a transition. <laughs> we just need to regain ourselves real quick. That was an experience. <laughs> you know what's even funnier? What? <laughs> Is that everyone's gonna think your laugh's fake? Oh my god. <laughs> But it's not. It's, it's not, not fake. fake. That's my real laugh. And I never laugh because it's embarrassing and people make fun of me for it. Like Mo. She's a recording of me doing at her house. It's like, I don't even know how to describe it. Like I start wheezing and then like I can't breathe. And then I keep laughing. When we get done with this, I want to go back and listen to that part. I don't. <laughs> Let me make a mark. In the notes. That was that was funny. Though. That was that was freaking <laughs> funny. Yeah. So on the first episode, we realized we did not laugh at all. So we're going to try to be a little bit more into it way too seriously. We were like, guys, this is our review podcast and we're going to be like Listen super to our review podcast. like hello guys, like please listen to us because we're all serious and we don't make jokes while we're recording and that's why we're going to keep our listeners. Yeah. That's stupid. All right guys, we're going to move on to the next segment of our podcast where we actually break down an anime. So last week we drew Monthly Girl Nazaki-kun, which I had never seen, so I was. You were honestly very apprehensive about watching it. In the yeah, beginning. I really didn't want to do this anime. Like, I was like, I don't want to watch a stupid rom com. I just watched a rom com. I did not. En- I mean, I enjoyed it, but I was like, I kind of want to watch something like you know, like exciting action. Give me the Shonen, it, Shonen, Shonen. Give me the death. Right, kill everyone off. But um, I'm gonna kind of talk about the general production information of the of the anime. So, Monthly Girl was produced by. Dojo Kobo Studio. I honestly have never heard of this studio before. This was kind of the first time I ever heard of it. And when I kind of looked up what else they done, there was nothing really super unique about the studio. Like I've never, none of the other enemies stuck out to me, which I personally found is refreshing that one of these lesser known studios were able to come up with something that was, I actually ended up enjoying this anime quite a bit, even though I was super apprehensive about watching it at first. But Yeah, definitely. Though I remember when it first came out and it wasn't as like well received yeah i agree i i mean i've never heard of this anime before so it was kind of the first time i've ever heard of it so it definitely on top of that it's a rom-com and i think a lot of people were expecting for the two main characters to get together at the end and which is not the case so like it, it just we'll talk about that in a little bit but it's more of a comedy i would i would put it as a comedy is the genre of this anime yeah i would say that it's definitely a comedy anime with like a subgenre of romance because definitely there is romance in there it's just not well i feel it's more of a parody to the typical what's the manga called again shoujo yeah so show doge don't even say it just say yeah 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 what mo said it's a parody to that it's not the typical like oh we're gonna have our high school theatrics and you know our shenanigans i mean it's that but it's more of like it's a it's well, all usually, these tropes that are made fun of well the thing that i find funny in it is that the actual anime is a shoujo anime yeah you know it is in that demographic but what's funny is it is that in in the anime is that like nozaki kun is a writer for shoujo manga you know yeah so do you kind of want to explain the plot a little bit or 
the very yeah, brief plot real quick. So we have our main protagonist, Chio Sakura, who one day decides to confess her love to her longtime crush, Nozaki. So she finally gets up to courage to say, I love you and stuff, but she miss speaks her words and accidentally says that she's a fan of Nozaki kun. Yeah, she literally is like, I'm a fan and Nozaki kun being the dense, dense idiot he is. He he's immediately not an idiot, he's just okay, a dense guy. He's just guy. dense. He's he's a really smart guy, but he's just dense. He immediately thinks he she's referring to his apparently very ex, very successful, generally successful pen name. Yeah, pen name manga career and like Sakiko Yumino. Yeah, I don't know that. But ends up giving her an autograph, autograph, thinking that she's, in fact, his fan of his manga. Yeah. Let's fall in love. And it's honestly a really fun, and everyone's just like, like, we don't know that initially until the end of the episode, so we just see him give an autograph to the girl that just confessed her feelings, and we're all just like, what the heck? And then through that, she actually gets roped into filling in the beta for his manga. Which I thought was, it was just, it was really funny how that whole transition happened because Nozaki is just like, okay, what are you doing after school today? And she's like, oh, I'm not doing anything. And then he's just like, how about you come home with me? And so, of course, she goes home with him. And then she gets there and realizes she's by herself with this man in that his house. That she's in love with. And she's freaking out, thinking that they're going to have to, you know, canoodle and stuff and, like, do the dirty. And she's, like, panicking about all that. And honestly, like, girl, what are you doing? Like, you go to your <laughs> crush's house, barely knowing the guy, and you're just like, oh, yeah, I'm just going to go there. It's fine. Like, Guys, don't do that. Don't do this. Honestly, this anime is just full of misunderstandings. And that's what makes it so funny. And like everyone like realizes it. And like like some characters realize that she realized she's like, Oh my gosh, I'm an idiot. Why did I do this? And he's just like, fill this in. And he just gives her a beta to fill in. And it's just it's pre- I I enjoy the transa- transition and then she realizes that, that he's actually a pretty prominent manga artist and that he's actually very popular in like the shoujo manga world. And so through that, she actually ends up becoming his assistant that helps fill in the beta, and that's basically the whole plot. Yeah, that's that's the first episode, pretty much in a nutshell. Like, there's really no plot. There's, like, this weird bicycle sequence where they're, like, riding a bike because she... But re- then again, the whole anime is like that. Yeah. It basically, it's Nozaki-kun trying to figure out content to put in his manga. Exactly. So they'll do all these really strange things that aren't interesting or are just weird. Or... Uh, attain to anything yeah so like for the bicycle thing i've this is kind of a little snippet to the humor so he so like nozaki's like i want to include the bicycle the next confession blah 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 but like i don't know how to do it and what's her name chio sakura sakura i'm calling her sakura or chio i'm calling her chio chio is her first name i'm calling her chio i'm sorry but chio is like oh how about like you know they ride behind and like unstuff like in and hold and like wrap his Wraps yeah. her hands around the Sit main in a character, yeah. and like you know. And then Amelia Nozaki is just like, "No, that's illegal. We can't do that. We can't include anything illegal. Like we can't include like drugs or alcohol or sex or any of that stuff or anything suggestive into this genre of manga. It has to be all replaced yeah, with other it's things. Like if we put in cigarettes, we have to replace it with candy. And if we put <laughs> yeah. in alcohol, it has to be grape juice. Yeah, stuff like that. And it's it's just he's like, I mean, like, no, we can't do that. Nope, sorry, we can't do that. And he, she's like, well, this is kind of lame. And so. Nozaki's solution to the whole bike thing is bringing a tandem bike. Yeah, exactly. And it's so weird. And he's just like, how about you ride home with me? (laughs) And it's just like. And so so their way home is just basically trying to figure out how to make a tandem bike. Yeah, and it's so lame. And and Nozaki's like, how does this feel? And she's like, it's so lame. I feel guilty for not pedaling. And literally while they're biking home. Everyone is like looking at them and they're just like have those faces like what the but heck is going on? But what's funnier is that even though throughout this whole bike ride, Chio's like, this is kind of lame and like stupid. She literally comes back the next day and she's like, you want to ride? Right. She she goes in and she has this weird like voice and she's like, hey, Nozaki, I brought my bike with me. How about you take a ride with me today? And it's just it's And it's the funny. same tandem bike. Yeah. And it's just. And then it, he goes, oh, I guess she liked it. <laughs> and, and luckily, the um, editor was like, no, we are not including this bike into this whole thing. And so... Honestly, all of that, there's just, like, so many shenanigans. Like, one one that I can think of that's one of my favorites is the box seat. 
Oh my gosh. Wait, wait, wait. Let's get into the characters first and then we can talk about the box because some of the characters involved we haven't talked about yet. Yeah, that's very true. So we kind of, so do you want to talk about Nozaki a little bit more about like what kind of character he is? I kind of feel like we hit that point already. Yeah, I mean, he's definitely just very dense guy who, you know, he's smart and he knows like what goes on in the world and he's actually very skilled when it comes to writing about high school love. But, which is ironic because he's no experience like in romance whatsoever, which is fairly obvious with his interactions with Chio. But like, he still is writing this amazing manga because he says it's because he gives so much advice to girls and he just knows and he just observes people and includes that into his stories. Honestly, when I first watched it through, I didn't think that he was going to be a character that spoke a whole lot. You know, you because that type of like character design usually gets like you know usually with that character design they get more of a like, of like Mori stoic, from yeah you know, like Mori from Oron which we talked about last week type of like yeah. you know character and I honestly didn't think that he would speak as much as he did but I'm glad he did because he was actually pretty funny yeah he's like he's a very dense character but also like the whole the whole premise of this show is they're trying to find material for and they're just interactions between the characters. They're just trying to find that for the manga he's writing. So, of course, he's kind of like, I need to do blah, 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 blah. I need to find this type of inspiration. I need to do this. And he does all these super strange things that most people, normal people, are like, what the heck is that guy doing? But he's just kind of in his own world. He's so dense. He doesn't realize what's going on. He's just like, I need to do this for the manga. Like when he's uh, trying to, like, surprise Chio. Oh, Yes. <laughs> Yeah, and she does. He doesn't quite understand that a surprise, like a romantic surprise, you know. He's just like, trying to surprise her with the strangest things. Well, because they're trying to figure out, like, they were trying to figure out how to like spice up the manga, right? Mm-hmm. And they were like, "Was it Chio, the one that was like, oh, like I would like a surprise?" And like, yeah. And you so know? his first solution is instead of Chio's chair being at her desk, he's just gonna sit there and stand on his. Oh, he's going to sit on his hands and knees and wait for her to sit on her, sit on him. And she does. And she literally just starts screaming and hiding in the corner because he's just sitting there as his her chair. Like like and it's so strange. It, or they're like walking in the hallway and he like pulls a popper. Yeah. And we're like, <laughs> he does a magic trick and then his hand falls off because he has that magic trick too. And she's just like, it was almost a good surprise. And then it just became creepy. Or uh, the curry. Oh, yeah. That was actually interesting. And they included that into the manga. Mm-hmm. And then the editor's like, no. when did we start writing a food manga? <laughs> but, yeah, so um, the next character that is introduced in the show, it, well, I think she's introduced first, but it's Chio. And she's your typical main heroine. Like she, main Yeah, heroine. exactly. And she's really short in stature. She is she has an iconic, like, big bow like red pink red bows with polka dots on them it's red bows with polka dots red bows with polka dots and she's very like your typical like main heroine she's just very bubbly very like the high-pitched voice and stuff and the the japanese sub um and it, it, you know she's just your typical heroine pretty much I, I yeah i mean nozaki and chio are two typical main characters in a romantic comedy i will say that yeah for sure and that's kind of like the first episode shows that you know, we're going to have a rom-com, like a typical rom- romantic comedy. But then after that, when they start introducing other characters, that completely changes. So um, do you want to talk? I feel like this is one of your favorite characters. You want to talk about the next character? Which one is it? Makoto. Oh, Makoshiba? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. he's I freaking love him. I'll let you discuss this one. Okay, so Makoshiba is Nozaki-kun's friend. But what's funny about it is that So, his two main characters in his manga, Suzuki and Mamiko, he actually got the inspiration for Mamiko from his guy friend, Makoshiba. Who is the female heroine of the manga that he's written. Yeah, that's that's who Mamiko is. Yeah, well, I mean, I don't want to know if it's a girl or guy just based off the name. Usually. (laughs) I'm sorry. I'm not good at this stuff. I was just trying to clarify. Whatever. Continue. Yeah. So the main heroine in Nozaki Kun's manga is actually comes from the inspiration of Makoshiba. 
because he says all these super flirty, like he's, he's super flirty with the girls and says all these like very smooth things and then immediately gets extremely embarrassed by what he says and then sulks in a corner. He regrets his decisions. And he... Su- yeah, and he, get, he gets super calm. He's like, oh, yes, I will help you out because I am just so popular with the girls. And then all of a sudden he's just like and it's super so shy and hides in I the corner. I love throughout the anime, though, how when more people get involved and they start reading it, they see the resemblance between Mamiko and Makoshiba and they're like, and he doesn't even person. realize it. And then they'll be like, oh my gosh, we need him to, we need her, we need him to win because it represents this, the main heroine in like a Nazaki's manga. And it's just, I thought it was very, I love that character. I, I think he was hilarious. It was so funny when they were all doing like a drawing contest and like, you could see the difference in level between like, nozaki and like chio you know and they were like talented artists and then like makoshiba couldn't draw anything at all yeah he was like nothing and but he's but then nozaki's like that's not his specialty yeah he's because like nozaki says that he's one of his assistants and then uh chio is just like what the heck do you do because like you can't draw to save your life and then he reveals that he actually draws like the flower scenes. Yeah, for... all the special effects and the yes. the fluff to all the like super lovey scenes, and he's really good at it too. Yeah, it's super funny, and he's like super proud of it too. I mean, like good for him. Go for it, man. Yeah, and so that will lead us into our next character, who is my personal favorite character. It is Kashima, like you, Kashima, and she. Well, she is super good friends with. Uh, Makoto and she's referred to as the prince of school which when she's introduced they're like oh no we have another friend that's great that Nazaki could base off one of his characters and like it's the prince and she's all like oh no the prince you know who's this gonna be and blah blah blah. and she's freaking out and then it's actually a girl because she's so extroverted and like very flirty with everyone like all the girls are swooning over all the time and she's just She's just too much. I love this character. She, I can't even describe her. She's too. so extra. Yeah, she's like, she kind of looks like a guy, but like, she wears a skirt and stuff, but all the girls love her. It's, but the it's, thing is, she realizes how extra she is. Oh, too, yeah. She's like, oh, I'm too much. To she's it. like, okay, yeah, it's fine. And then, like, she's the star of the drama club, which they only exclusively do Prince. Like, they only do, like, stuff with princes in it because that's the only part she can do. But she does it so well, and everyone loves it. But yeah, it's just she's just a really, really funny character. She, it's a, she's a major uh, gender bender too, because normally you have a male character, kind of like Makoto, that is like super great with all the, with all the girls and stuff. But in this case, it's a girl, and she's just everyone just literally is messing up on purposely, so she will help them and blah blah blah. Like it's just, I love that character. She cracks me up. I find that so funny because. Kashima and uh, Makoshima actually call themselves rivals to each other. Yeah, they're like, we're, we were rivals, but now we're just friends because we're just equals, even though Kashima is better at everything, like everything but singing. She can't sing to save her life, which is, uh, that whole thing was really funny too, but we'll get into that. But I love Kashima and her interactions with everyone, especially her ex- interactions with Hori. Do you want to explain the next? I love Hori. You want to introduce the next character? Hori is um, actually the president of the drama club, and he actually does backgrounds for Nozaki's mangas. And um, what's funny about it is, I'll never forget this scene, is when Chio is doing like beta and stuff, oh, and yeah. she finds his little marker about you know the underwear and the cat. And then she goes, she's uh, helping the drama club do like paint backgrounds and stuff for their plays. And she sees that icon, you know, on the background where she needs to paint it. And then she's like, she's like, do you prefer? <laughs> do you prefer boxers <laughs> or, or briefs? briefs? <laughs> and, and then Kashima is just like, what the heck? That's such a personal question. And then like, um, Hori he realizes. Goes, you? <laughs> you do too? And then they just start talking about the briefs and they're like oh yeah i just started help like i started wearing these and stuff and just started and like they're trying to subtly talk about how they help nizaki write this manga which they don't want because everyone to know apparently, about apparently like it's a huge like secret yeah Even they though, don't like, want nizaki people to know doesn't i don't think nizaki yeah. cares nizaki's like i've told my classmates but they didn't believe me and like it's funny because chiyo thinks that she's special at the very beginning and then he's just like yeah i told everyone but none of them believe me and she's like oh actually i'm not special at all and it's just 
but everyone keeps it a secret for some reason. And Kashima is just freaking out. And so Kashima is like, you know what? I'm going to just ask, like, do you like, she's like, what type of briefs do you watch? Like, watch? What type of briefs do you wear? And then literally, um, Hori just like smacks her and like hits her. And like, because that's the like dynamic between Kashima and Hori is Ka- how would you describe their love interest in each other? Like, I'd say they those two characters have more of a romantic tie-in than Chio and Nozaki do. Yeah, it's just weird because I think Kashima is interested. Kashima is totally into Hori. Well, I think yeah, I think Kashima likes Hori. I don't think I think Hori sees Kashima as like she like Hori sees it as I'm your parent parent. Figure. Like a pupil. Yeah, like thing. I'm the president of the drama club and you're like our star pupil, but you are a hot mess. So I'm going to take care of you kind of thing. Yeah, definitely. And super proud of everything that Kashima does. We've forgotten one character. Well, we can talk about it a little bit. We still have two characters left. We do? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I thought we only had one. No, we have but... two more. But, um, and it's just funny because Kashima, I mean... So Kashima is like the super lovey, you know, flirty with everyone. She skips out on drama practice all the time. And then Hori, the president of the drama club, is considered like the violent one. So he will literally like charge into a room and like kick Kashima across the hallway or like like smack her with something. And she's just bleeding on the floor. And everyone's just like, Kashima, you're such an idiot. And it's the just, dynamic between those two is so, so funny. funny. And I, I literally just watch those scenes and I laugh. I genuinely laugh at those scenes. Honestly, anything... Any scene with like Hori or Kashima in it is guaranteed to be funny. Yeah, I really like those characters, but I also really like the next character, which was Yuzuki Seo. 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 God damn it! I can't pronounce anything. It's fine. But um, do you want to explain it? Or do you want me to explain it? I know who the next character is. So oh, you... I, it's Waka. Yeah. Duh. Waka. Duh. I'm stupid. <laughs> do you, um? Do you want me to just talk about it, or do you want to talk about? It? Yeah, I can talk about Seo. So Seo is Chio's friend, and I think it was it was in the manga, or what am I saying? In the anime where they were like, yeah, we just kind of became friends because we had classes together. Yeah, we just sit to each other. But Nozaki's thinking because Seo has such like a bad attitude in life. Yeah, Seo, she's a character. She's your typical like she's super athletic, but she's super super blunt. Like not blunt. She's, she speaks her mind. She speaks her mind. So she's blunt. It's not like, I don't know, I I relate a lot to this character. She, like, she calls it how she sees it. Yeah, and like she doesn't sugarcoat anything. She's kind of borderline rude, and she's always in trouble, so she's constantly running away from the teachers. She's just a troublemaker, and no sportsmanship whatsoever, because she will play for on the basketball team to prepare the male, the men's and girls' teams for like tough opponents, and she'll just have terrible sportsmanship and like run through people, plow them over. And she's just... She's a she's a character. We'll just put it that way. But the funny thing about her is that she has an amazing singing voice. She's called what is it, the Lore- the Lorelai? Yes, of the Glee Club. Yes, and it's just and she's it's actually very good. But I mean, it's it's so funny. <laughs> and Nazaki was like, "Why are you friends with this girl? She's literally like awful. She's ignorant. She's all these different things." And Chio, of course, is like, "You know, you really shouldn't be saying anything about like being oblivious and stuff because you're the most oblivious." But whatever. But there's, there's like one scene. I I really like the visuals in this scene. Is when uh, Seo is helping Nizaki carry those books to the science lab, and they yes. And then all of a sudden, she's like, "Let's walk on our hands." And I don't know what that was about. But then she like. Starts doing that, and then the teacher's like, "What are you doing?" Blah, blah, blah. And, and then, then she starts walking like back on her hands. And then she runs to Nozaki, and he's like, "Nozaki, hold these for me. I'll come back for you or something." And then Nozaki's like, "This is why you're friends with this character." And like, because you, they, they have this like weird Western like vibe. Yeah, like old Western vibe with the shadows, which were really intense. And then he's like, "I will wait for you forever." And then Chio is walking down the hallway, like I would say a couple hours later, and then. Here comes Chio and no- Nozaki's just sitting on the floor with the books. Yeah, and he's just like sulking. And then she's like, what are you doing? And he was like, she never came back for me. <laughs> and it's just, it's really funny because he like, for a brief moment, he's like, this is why you like her so much. And then she's like, he's like, this is awful. I hate this character. I hate this this person. And it's just, it's really funny. I also love the dynamic in the show, how anytime Chio brings up to anybody about her crush they're like why do you like him right <laughs> yeah because in the first episode you want to talk about that scene yes oh my gosh <laughs> it's when chia was talking to 
talking to Zaki Kuhn about who she liked and she was didn't she say that she had confessed to him? Yeah, she was like she was like referring to Nazaki by talking about herself and she was like, Oh yeah, there's this guy I like, blah 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 and like I told him that I liked, but he didn't realize I liked him. And I now I get to spend a lot of time with him because I'm his friend, but he doesn't realize I like him. But you know that's okay because I'm spending time. And Nizaki's like, well, he sounds like like why would you like anyone like that? And He's she's like, like he sounds oh. like a terrible person. And she's just like, oh, you know. And she's like, oh, if only you know, you know. <laughs> and like it's pretty funny that they refer to that a lot. Yeah, it's any it's any character that Chio talks to about her crush, you know, and mm-hmm. they're like, every time they're like. Why are you with him? He's terrible. Right. And uh, speaking of terrible relationships, so Seo is... Seo. Seo. God damn it. Um, I don't know if I would say she likes Waka, who's the next they character. They have a dynamic they, they relationship. Have, they have an interesting friendship. We'll just put it at that. Cause, They're the kind of like love-hate relationship. Yeah, because Waka is on the basketball team. And he's old friends with Nozaki, and he actually helps um, with the manga, too. He does all the- The toning. The toning and stuff, which is really funny when he's a first year, because they're all in different years. And so he's on the basketball team, and Seo only goes after Waka whenever they practice. And he's like, why does she hate me so much? I hate this person. And like, blah, blah, blah. He's like freaking out. And then like, there's a little bit development in their relationship. There's- no character development, guys. Like, that is not what this show's about. There's no plot, really. But Waka starts, like, getting like, a little jealous. Like, if you jealous. guys have ever seen the anime Asobi Asobe, it's basically like that. There is absolutely no plot or character development. Yeah, I've never seen that show. I'm <clears throat> going to show it to you. Oh, no. <laughs> but um, Waka just, the whole time is just kind of like, I hate this person, but... I also, like, I'm kind of jealous, you know, like, if she tries to hang out with anyone else. And so it's almost like the two of them have reversed in terms of, like, well, actually, Nozaki bases off two new characters based off of these two's relationship, but he switches the genders of each of them. So Waka is, like, the new girl, and then Seo is the guy, and it's just, it's funny because it's another gender bender. It's kind of like that story of how, like, these two characters, like, hate each other in real life, but then, like... They text each other behind the phone, but they don't know who each other is. Right, because Waka's and in love. And they're in love. Like, love with each other. Yeah, because Waka's in love with the, uh, what is it called? The Lalori? The Lorelai. The Lalori. The Lorelai. Of the Glee Of the Glee Club. Club. And she, he's like, oh, she has such a beautiful voice. Nothing like you, Sayo. Like, Sayo, you have a terrible personality. You're rude. You cause me so much stress in life. But she, her voice makes me fall asleep at night. And Sayo's just like, you're an idiot. Like. But she doesn't say it ever, and she never says it. She just, like, moves on. She's like, I'm calling you Waka from now on. And he's just like, what's wrong with you? And it's just their dynamic. I I enjoy their dynamic a lot, too, but I liked Kashima and um, Hori's dynamic oh, probably the most. Oh, I definitely like Kashima and Hori more than I liked Seo and Waka. But I always I also enjoyed Seo's and Waka Oh, yeah, well. don't get me wrong. I probably, this is going to sound terrible, but I enjoyed Nizaki and Chiyo's dynamic probably the least because i like the side characters better they had a very they didn't really have a dynamic they were just just, because nozaki's so dense yeah they They were just doing shenanigans trying to figure out different things like everybody else could figure out that like chio liked nozaki yeah and everyone else was just like oh they except each other nozaki yeah it's fine oh and then um there's that one scene where hori is like okay i can't always be here to draw backgrounds like this is awful so like you need to start practicing these backgrounds, like the box <laughs> and the fucking box. You want to talk about this? I know you oh like this gosh, scene. Oh my gosh! Yes, this is my favorite scene. I died when this scene. So Hori was like, you know, well, I think it was like Nozaki Kun was making Hori draw like so many backgrounds, you know, and Hori was like, you know, I'm not always going to be here to draw your backgrounds, so it would probably be best if you actually learned how to draw backgrounds. And so he was trying to teach Nozaki Kun about dimensions and stuff like that. And so they were drawing the background for a seal of like in the backyard or out in a park or something like that. And <laughs> when Nozaki Kun drew the scene, uh, the ma- the male uh, 
protagonist in the manga was floating in the air. Yeah, he was like either floating in the air or in the flower bed. It didn't make any sense. And then Nozaki's solution is like... Well, and like Hori was like, Nozaki, he's like floating in the air. Like, like Mamiko is the female protagonist in the manga. And she's like sit, standing on the ground perfectly. But the male protagonist looks like he's just like floating in the air. Yeah, And so he was like... Here's my solution is I'm just going to draw a box <laughs> under him. And then all of a sudden the whole episode is just full of boxes. Well, it's like they keep drawing these backgrounds, you know. And it's funny because like they were drawing this one scene where it was like the male protagonist and the female protagonist were like looking at each other. But the male protagonist looked significantly taller <laughs> yes. than the female. And he was like... Why is he like so tall? And like Nozaki King was like, he's standing on the box. He's standing on the box, obviously. And Hori's just like, what is wrong with you? And so, because of that, all nighter they had to pull to finish it because Hori's like, I gotta have to do this myself. The next day at drama practice, they're like rehearsing, blah, blah. And then Hori's just falling asleep the whole time. He's the president of the drama club. So, like, let's take a break. And so, Kashima is trying to help take something off of a like high spot. So, she steps on a box. And then Hori's like, no, not the box. And literally jumps like, no more and, boxes. and kicks the box out from underneath her. And then she, he just falls asleep on the ground. And Kashima is just like, what the heck's going on? And so Kashima decides to carry Hori back to the nurse's, the nurse's office. office. <laughs> but she's so convinced that Hori wants to be carried like a princess. Yes. That she's like, oh, I'm going to carry him princess style. But then she realizes that she can't. You know, she can't carry him because he's, like, bigger and, like, he's a guy. Yeah, and, like, I mean, also... Well, and also it would hurt his pride. <laughs> yeah. I thought, I thought, I personally thought it was more of the pride thing because I think he wanted the... Like, she is convinced he wants to be the princess because he's too short to be any of the main male characters. Like, that's what they keep saying. In the plays. Yeah, in the, in the plays. But, um, so she decides to put him on her back, but she doesn't want to just carry him like no she puts She's a like, bull if I mask can't be your prince i'll be your steed yeah and then she puts a bull mask on it wasn't even a horse and she just puts a bull mask like whole mask on and then he wakes Starts, up like, galloping yeah. down the hallway with him <laughs> on her back and then they just like run and then he wakes up and he's like what the hell is going like, on who are you and so then they just like take off and he's literally like flailing off her it's like and everyone's just like what is going on and then they get to like the nurse's office and he's like uh thank you mr bull for helping like who apparently are he's you? not smart enough to figure out who this person is but and then she's like oh it's me you know you know it was just me of course and then he just i don't even remember what he does i think he just falls asleep I, I think that's where it kind of ended. It was but, just like, oh what? my gosh. That was the funniest thing. Like, And then Kashima, like, I think, I don't know if it's next, but like, she sees Naz- um, Nazuko, Nazaki, sees Nazaki and Hori interacting in the hallway. And then um, Kashima's with Chio, and she's like, why are they talking about blah, blah, blah? Like, what's going on? Like, does she, does Hori think that Nazaki is more attractive than me? And so. Nizaki, I mean, Kashima is like running down the hallway, like, Hori, who do you think is more attractive, me or Nizaki? And then immediately Hori's like, without a B, he's like, Nizaki. And then she just immediately turns around and runs back down the hallway she and just like, Chio. Chio. She thinks, he thinks that Nizaki is more attractive than me. And then she was like, well, if it makes you feel any better, I do too. And she's like, it doesn't make me feel any better. It's like you pick the worst person to ask who's more attractive. Right. And I just, I loved anytime Kashima and Hori were in a room together and their interaction and her shenanigans, everything about it. Absolutely loved it. Oh my gosh. I loved that anime. It's so freaking funny. But yeah. And I mean, and overall, the visuals, there was nothing like super, super special about it, but it was interesting. Like, I like some of the shadowing techniques they use. Uh, the time of day never made sense because apparently they're like it's nighttime when they do their after school clubs and then all of a sudden it's daylight again after they finish their club activities so that didn't really make sense but i loved i loved all the sulking in the corner or off in their own head like panicking i loved uh the scenes where like chio was like in her own head about nozaki Mm. you know because at the very beginning she would like mistake things for nozaki kun like hinting that he liked her or something and she'd be like oh my gosh like what is this like you know um 
rolling on the floor or like just, screaming at herself. And then there's always these over the top like visual effects and stuff that are like everywhere. But it's just it's very it's very typical of that type of genre of manga, and it makes it honestly though for a shoujo manga, the animation is actually flows like very nicely. Does it? Okay. I I once again I this is the first rom com really I've seen. I mean, definitely newer ones have better like flow to it and stuff, but um, just the characters move very naturally. Yeah, you know, I just think it's it's just very unique in that aspect. It's very appealing. Like, yeah, all I, the colors. I liked and it at first. I was like, "This is going to be stupid. It's not going to be a good animation." But it it is a good animation. It's nothing amazing. It doesn't like, oh my gosh, this is the best animation I've ever seen. It's just. It's good, you know, like it there's nothing really to complain about. I guess would be a good way to put it. I mean, considering that it's not something very actiony or anything like yeah. that, it's like the animation is very surprising. Yeah, I know. And very pleasing. Um, but oh, there's one scene I want to talk about. We'll talk about it later. But so the music in it, the music in the anime itself, nothing really stuck out to me. It's not like I remember the tones. Yeah. And like, most animes, I don't really recognize, remember the music that much. But the opening, on the other hand, I really like the opening. Yes, the opening. I remember first watching the opening, and I didn't really like it. But the more that I watched it, I was like, this opening is pretty cool. Like, I just love it. I loved how everything flowed through it. You yeah, know? like, I remember. It's Especially, just... like, the parts where, like, Chiyo, like, had the big, like, beta brush you know mm-hmm. and like she you know or hori was you know like it's just there's just a lot of really good scene changes all the character cameos are really good like it shows them the tanuki and, the tanuki <laughs> and there's an explosion which i like any opening with an explosion i'm not gonna lie so i like that the a tanuki lot explodes. Yeah, the tanuki tano- explodes oh my gosh we're not gonna talk about the tanukis <laughs> that's a whole nother thing but Go watch the anime <laughs> just watch the anime we can't spoil all of it but um it was and the music is such a bop. Like, it's so good. Like, it, it's a nice, like, crescendo to a really, like, high point. And it, it's just really memorable, which is why we're going to recommend it for, like, the the opening of, the, like, the song of the week and stuff. And I remember when I first watched it, I was like, man, there is so much going on right now. Like, there is too much. Like, I don't know what's going on. I At first, I didn't like the opening because it was just over-the-top graphics and stuff, but then I realized it's really fitting because they write manga, and it's a lot of those references and stuff. But, I mean, that that's just me. The ending, on the other hand... Please, let's not talk... Yeah, that, no, the ending is just not good. But you always have to finish the ending because there's always these little clips at the end of each episode, but you are, like... Yeah, and, like, if you're first time, like, watching, you don't even realize until you get to the scene where, like, Makoshiba comes in for the first time, and then you watch that episode, and it's, like, he just, like, appeared out of nowhere, like, no, like... No character introduction, because they do these little, what is it called, post-credit scenes afterwards, and so you have to watch those. It's setting up for, like, the next episode. And they're pretty good, too. I like them all. Um, Oh, another thing about the visuals I really liked was that they incorporated the manga really well and so like the manga story really well into everything they did so they they would show like manga panels for different things that Nazaki was talking to people about and he would instantly make these whole pages of uh, manga and then he would like they would show it on the screen and i really liked that it was two different mediums they kind of showed in the same in the anime yeah 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 i get what you talk like um like, if they were, like, trying to come up with, like, something, like, a scene or, you know, and they yeah. were, like, um, you know, and, like, they'd be, like, oh, well, what if you do this, you know? And then Nozaki-kun would just, like, draw it out just real quick. draw it real quick, and he'd be, like, oh, here, this is exactly what I mean. Like, the whole bike thing, he would just draw yes. it out. And, the, and then, um, and like, any time he had a thought, he would, like, think about it, and he would think it in manga panels. And I like that a lot. I thought, because I, I've... I don't read a ton of manga, if any, ever. And so this was a nice, like, introduction into kind of, like, how that world is for me, which I'm sure... You know what's funny the other day is, like, I was going through boxes, and I actually (laughs) found the very first manga that I had ever bought. And only manga. And only manga (laughs) I had ever bought. And you want to know why? Because 
when I bought that manga, I was so embarrassed to buy manga because I went and bought it at a bookstore. Oh, no. I didn't get it online. Oh, no. I bought it at a bookstore. And I was so nervous to go get that because I was closeted weeb. Classic closeted weeb. It's okay. It's okay. And I didn't want the cashier to look at me weird <laughs> for getting a skip And Pete it's so manga. sad that we feel that we are ashamed that we like this medium. It's not even a genre. Like, it's a medium. It's not... It's not like action or horror. It's just a different way to show those type of stories. And it's a shame that our society, in America at least, has kind of made it where it's hard to show that. Like, I'm having a hard time. Like, I'm still trying to decide, like, if I want to keep promoting our podcast on my personal Instagram page. Like, do I want Did people knowing that? It? Not yet. Oh. <laughs> I'm still deciding if I want to or not. And I think some days I'm like, yes, I'm going to do this. But also, like, I don't really want someone, I don't want the whole world to see, like, but also at the same time, like, I'm not ashamed of it by any means. If someone asks yeah, me, no, I'll talk about it. From where I was back then to where I am now, I'm in completely different places. But, I mean, I'm more open to it now. Like, if somebody asked me, like, oh, do you watch anime? I'd say, yeah. yeah. But I wouldn't actively go and, like, say, like, I watch anime, you know? See, like, one of the things I want to do is I want to change my screensaver on my laptop to a My Hero um well, uh, wallpaper because there's so many really cool ones on Pinterest. But I'm always like, well, do I want people to see that? You know, well, I just got into the thing where I have like on my iPad now. Yeah, animes. You know, and it's just it's a shame that we're ashamed of that because we shouldn't be. Because it's like I want to be the person that like has a collection of mangas and like has like you know collectibles yeah, exactly. and stuff like that. You know, eventually our extremely high tech studio. We'll be covered with covered stuff. Covered with it, which is going to be my room in Stillwater whenever we get there, but that's that's not for a couple months. I would take out the fact that we live in Stillwater. Oh, my God. We go to OSU, though. They already know that. Did they? Did we They did we say that we went to OSU? I thought that we just said that we were in college. Oh, fine. I'll edit it out. I don't care if they know where I live. Uh, fine. Matt lives at... <laughs> Matt, I live in Stillwater, Oklahoma, y'all. I'm not giving and my, my address. my address is... <laughs> Well, let me slowly narrow down my address to exactly which street I live on. I'll avoid that part. But, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much everything. I, felt. I think I know what senior one to talk about. Is it the... Yes. <laughs> I know <laughs> no, no, what no, no. you're talking so, about. So, Molly, what... I mean, wow. So, Mo, what is... Who is your best boy and best girl in this anime? <laughs> right. But, yeah, I think I know where you're going for with what senior one to talk about. So, I'm going to ask you this question. Maddie. Who is your best boy and best girl in this anime? Well, Mo, thanks for asking. <laughs> um, I'm going to start with best girl. I like Kashima the best just because I love how much of a gender bender she is. I love her over-the-top antics. I love how everyone fawns over her. I just, she's just, I really like Kashima. She's one of my, she's, I think, best girl. That's just my opinion. But best boy <laughs> is, uh, I don't, what's his name? Tomoda. Okay. But best boy is Tomoda from the online dating simulation that um, uh, Makoto and Nozaki play one night. And because he just he sacrifices everything for his best friend and the whole time. And so for the protagonist for the protagonist. And then I just love that character. It's definitely best boy. He gives up his entire life for them. And that the whole scene. So the whole premise of the scene <laughs> is that Makoshiba is playing an Atome game, you know, and he's going through and like, you know, he's getting to the end and, you know, Nozaki's like, well, like, what is that? You know, and Makoshiba's like, well, come over here and like play it, you know? And so they start playing this like Atome game, you know, and. <laughs> and pretty what, much Nozaki is playing it and he's just like doing poorly at he's it. He's just doing terrible. He's like, but that's not what I would do. And I don't want he's like. He's, like, picking, like, all the wrong choices. Yeah, and, like, he's, like, his head's in, as if he's in the manga, and, like, he's the main character of the manga, and he doesn't like, know how to switch. It's because yeah, it's just... he put his name as the main protagonist in his manga yeah. for the dating sim game. And he's, like, nobody else can have him but Mommy Go. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, like, 
And so, like, not Nozaki is just doing a really bad job, and then they're like, oh, we have to do this. They play well, the whole they, game that night. Well, then they changed his name to Nozaki. Yeah. And then, so then they're going through the game, and they're like, well, why don't you, he's like, oh, I don't know what to do about the, this girl, you know, and, um. And then, and then um, Makoto is just like, ask your best friend. Tomoda. And then, Tomoda. And then Nozaki's like, what does he want? What's his angle? He never does this. There's always an angle. He's probably jealous. And then. Makoto is like no like he's literally just gonna give you information like that's how the game's set up and so they play the whole game that night and the entire time they're just showing scenes of Tomoda and like him helping out like he the fights a bunch of thugs and like <laughs> helping the main protagonist and so by the end of it they're like we need to write Tomoda they're like story. we're gonna give you the happy ending Tomoda. you deserve the happy ending because you are best boy and so they end up making <laughs> They start trying to write a manga, and they're like, oh, you should get this girl. But then They write a BL manga yeah. about the main protagonist, Antomoda. Yes, and it's just... And then so, like, Sakura shows up the next day, and she's just like, what has happened here? Why are you guys, like, look like that? They're like, we wrote an entire manga last night for Tomoda to be happy. And <laughs> I just love it. He's hands down best boy. I love that whole... I thought that whole I thought that was so funny. I, I have to say yeah. the box scene is like my favorite. Oh yeah, it definitely is. But Mo, who's best girl and best boy in your opinion? I like Hori for best boy. Oh yeah. Definitely Hori's like one of any scene that he was in, it was just flat out funny. Funny as shit. His like whole interactions with like everyone in the group, it was funny no matter who it was. You know, I I just like Hori like Go watch it. You'll see. You'll like Hori, too. Yeah, I agree. Hori's one of my favorites. If I didn't choose Tomoda Tomoda. (laughs) for the best boy, I would have chose Hori for sure. But who's your best girl? Best girl? That one's kind of a hard one. I don't know. Like, I felt the guys in this were more likable than the girls, so it's kind of hard. I would probably pick Kashima, too, in all honesty. Yeah, I I think Kashima was just a really unique character. Like, I like Chio and stuff, but I just... I don't know. She's it's kind just, of, she's just, you know, your typical, stereotypical main she kinda seemed plain. love interest. She was pretty plain. So was Nazaki, in my opinion. I liked all the background characters more, but that was just me. Secondary. Oh, me too. Like, even though, like, Nozaki and Chio were the main characters, I tended to like the secondary characters more. Oh, yeah, more. for sure. So do you want to talk about, like, the pros and cons in general? Like, what what was one thing you liked the most about Monthly Girl? And then, like... I, we can talk about that. How do you want to do this part? Definitely. the I've seen this anime twice now. I I watched it when it first came out, and then I rewatched it to do this podcast. And I remember the first time that I ever watched it through, I was so mad at the end when the two main characters didn't get together. You know, because I was like, this is a romantic comedy. Like, the two main characters are supposed to get together. Like... Or at least, like, confess to each other at the, you know, minimum. Yeah, they uh, confess their feelings for each other. But there was no And so no I was so romance. mad about that, you know? And then the second time watching it through, now that I've matured more in my anime watching ways, I realized, like, this is not a romance anime. Oh, it yeah. is a straight-up comedy. comedy. I do wish that they did include more romance in it, though. Oh, I do definitely. think I think that would have been a bit better. I if they ever did, I wish. I hope they make a second season. I don't know if they will. They won't make a second season because the manga does do well, and they won't make a second season unless the manga starts to do poorly. Okay, well that makes sense. But I know that there's actually a lot more characters later on in the manga and stuff. So I'd be interested to see if they do make a second season eventually. Hopefully, I think it would be good for them. They would just have to make it as good as the first one you yeah, know with the same sure. level of comedy though i would like for them to add a little bit more romance yeah. into it so what did you like the most about it though i liked that it wasn't your typical rom-com though yeah. so like your your con and pro are kind of the same thing yeah they're kind of <laughs> honestly the same thing that it's just not your typical rom-com i agree you know and like it's something that anybody can watch and like because yeah. it's just that funny oh yeah you know like Especially, like, with, like... It's very episodic. Yes, especially with, like, you. Like, I even suggested, like, we draw another one, and he was like, it's fine. I was like, we'll have to watch it eventually. I guess I'll watch it. 
you know, and I kept, like, telling him, like, don't worry, you're gonna like it, like, you know, and, but, um, it's for all, like, ages and, like, genders, like, I feel like it's just that level of, like, comedy, and it's so universal that. Well, um, so this is gonna be kind of another topic I wanted to discuss a little bit, but, so, I feel that comedy, especially in anime, is something that should be watched in your the language you're fluent in. Because I think timing is everything in comedy. So, like, I watched it subbed. And I still laughed a lot, but I do know that if I watched a dub and was able to watch reactions and lined up well with what was being said, I think I would have laughed more. But Yeah, most definitely. So, I feel like you, I think, laughed a lot more in it than I did because you watched a dub, right? I did watch it dubbed. And I watched it subbed. And the sub is good. I liked it. I still wouldn't recommend... I would still recommend it if the only place... Oh, I think dub or sub are, like, both good. because I could only watch it on Crunchyroll. That's the only place I could find it. And there is a dub on... I would have given you my Verve account. Yeah, you know, I didn't think about it. I was like, I'll just watch a sub. It's fine. But, um... I do... I did hear a lot of clips for the dub. Like, Monica Real plays, um... Kashima, I want to say. Yeah. And it, she did a really good job at it. Like, I thought, I, from what I heard, all the females especially sounded good. And so did the men, so. Here's the thing with dub, is sometimes I have trouble with the voices not fitting the character. Yeah. You know, especially with the dub. And I honestly think that they did a really good job of mel- meshing up uh, the characters with the voice actors I that kind of fit, agree. you know, that description. Like, I didn't watch it, uh, but I heard, I watched clips, and I was like, oh, these are all pretty good. Because definitely there are some anime out there that the dub actors, like, I'm very sorry, you just, it just doesn't fit. Yeah, and like, I would say it's often better to watch the sub if you want to avoid, if you want to truly experience the culture in Japan, or like, whatever culture they were trying to portray, it is better to watch a dub, I agree. But, I mean, watch it sub, but... For a comedy, I think it is better to watch it dubbed. And I almost always prefer dub just because I'm lazy and I don't want to read. Which, And also, I don't think it makes that much of a difference in the end. Unless the dub is just really, really bad. I'm going to be honest. One of the reasons why I watch dub is because I can do things. While yeah, exactly. I don't have to pay attention to what I'm watching. I can like get up, go do things, listen to it while... And pretty much know what's going on. Yeah, yeah. But, um... I mean, that's pretty much everything I had to say. I can't think of... Do you have anything else you want to say? Any final thoughts and notes? Blah, blah, no, blah. I think we've pretty much covered Mother um, Girl. Yeah. Okay, Benjis, this week um, we have a couple recommendations for songs to add to your growing anime song playlist, opening music in general. But um, So, Mo, do you want to take it away? What, what's your recommendation for the week? Um, definitely. We can't do a review about Monthly Girls Nozaki-kun without recommending the opening song. Preach, preach. Like, you're I completely mean, right. It's so it's a good song. It's a good opening. It's a good song. The song just fits so well, and it's such a bop. Like, oh, it is. It is a banger. Like, trust me, I've been banging out to it in my car. Like, Wait, what's, it, last what's week. it called? Kimi Janka Dame Mir- Miki? Wow, you, you knew that off the top of your head. <laughs> this is not good for me. Uh, Step up your game. Uh, yeah, I literally just followed the show, uh, the song I was going to recommend. You still can't even say the title of the anime, right? Ah, uh, you mean Muffly Girl Senpai? <laughs> I want to hit you. I know, I'm so sorry. I'm calling it Muffly Girl from now on. Just call it Muffly Girl. Okay. Please don't even say Nozaki. Wait, so like, yeah, it's just a bop. It's very... It's just a it's a really good song. I need to add it to my Spotify playlist, that's for sure. Oh, it's super good. What um, about you? I so this week I discovered this song recently on um Spotify because it used not to be there when I watched the anime originally, but it's the it's the Hayoka opening, the first opening for Hayoka. It's by Chocho. I don't know the song because it's in Cantonese and I can't read Cantonese. Uh but I don't know the actual name, but if you look up if you look up the Hayoka openings, it will uh pop up for you. It's it's really good. It's this it's not like rager like not like last week's inferno um recommendation it's just it's peaceful it's i just liked it a lot i will i love that opening as well and i've just been listening to it a lot lately in the shower i don't know it's just i just jammed to it i'm glad that you corrected yourself because i was about to say you have not seen haikyuu okay i'm sorry i was i couldn't even spell it when i was trying to do these like 
opening recommendations and stuff yesterday, I was like volleyball anime because I didn't even know it. But Hayoka is the mystery slice of life one that I really like. It's 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 a really good anime. I recommend it. It's the first really slice of life I watched, and the opening is just it's very well done. It's uh made by that studio that had that fire. What's that studio called? I forgot the name of the studio. It's not Bones, is it? No, it's not Studio Bones. It's the Sensei. one that it's the one that literally had like a fire there because someone got angry and a bunch of people died there a couple years ago. I think I know what you're talking about. I don't know the name off the top of my head though. Yeah, I don't remember the name of it, but it was really sad because that studio is very unique because they don't have insane deadlines. They actually will just postpone the releases or they just wait to have them all done before they release them and. As a result, the animation is just beautiful for those type of shows. It's the that one anime where the girl is like a literal like god, and she's in the school, in the class with them. I don't know the name of it. Oh, Toilet Bound uh, Hanako Kun. Yeah, that one. I just watched that not too long ago. Oh, really? Yeah, yes. that that that's the same studio, I think. But um, it's like they do really good animations, and it's very unique. And I don't know, I just really like them. Oh no, definitely, I totally agree. Like. I remember I texted you not too long ago, and I was like, "You need to watch this anime because it's just like really pretty." Yeah, there, it's it's good, and I I love that studio. It's really it's a tragedy what happened there because they were really pushing the the status quo for the um studio culture because they were actually like giving breaks. They were not expecting these intense amount of like from their animators and. It's kind of sad, but what happened to them? They were really like pushing that. It was very progressive for the um, studios and stuff. But yeah, those are yeah. those are our recommendations for y'all. If you guys have any recommendations, please contact us at. Where's our bag? Oh, it's underneath the table. It's my turn to draw now. Okay. All right. Um, I'll do. I guess the introduction. Yeah. All right, guys. So this is the portion of our podcast where we draw next week's review. As we know, last time we drew one that I was not looking forward to, but ended up really enjoying it. So I'm hoping this week's just as good. Um, I got out of my bag. Did you have any you need to add to this? Yeah. Okay, we can add them next time. Yeah. Because I added all mine this time. So just shaking up the bag. Drum roll, please. I'll just insert the audio. Actually, that works better, too. Okay. I'm just... Okay. Next week's reveal will be... Okay, okay. I don't know what this says. Axel World? Excel World? Excel. Oh! God damn it. I have another show I have to watch now. Well, guys. That one's a good one. You're going to like it. Am I? Yes. It is not. Uh... <laughs> it's it's really cool. What type of genre is it? Um, it It's like. It's, it's definitely. It's action. It's an action? Yes, okay, it's cool. an action one. Cool. Okay. I like it already. So. You you will you'll like it. I God damn it! Why are we only watching the ones you draw? I was like, oh, I'm gonna reach in the bottom. Because and get I've my... seen so much more than How you. How many more have you seen than me? A lot. How much have you seen? Matthew, you've seen my list. I can't remember the number. I don't know the number either, I mean, mine... but I know it's probably above fifty. Well, mine's close to seventy now, according to the opening list I made. I don't know. I don't know. Well, Tune in you next you're week. gonna like Excel World. I okay. promise. You want to do the outro real quick? Yeah. All right, guys. I think we're getting to the end of this episode. Yeah, I think so too. And I think that you know we said our piece about Monthly Girls Nozaki Kun. I highly recommend it. Yep, highly recommend. Go watch it. You can find it on Crunchyroll um, and Verve. Yeah, I don't. I couldn't find it anywhere else. There's also a dub on YouTube, but it's um, sped up. And the color is pretty low quality, so I I would re- I would just watch it subbed at that point. Yeah, definitely. Um, you can watch it subbed on Crunchyroll or dubbed on, and subbed on Verve. Um, but yeah, yeah. Thanks um, again for listening to our rant about anime. Yeah, we there was a couple tangents at the beginning. I am so sorry you had to hear about that about the whole Earth Day shirt. <laughs> Don't want to get back in that, but it's fine. But um, yeah, thank you guys for listening once again. If you have any other comments or anything you want to say to us, any recommendations. Send us recommendations. Yeah. But um, yeah, I guess we should probably include our social media plugs right now because we haven't talked about that yet. So, Mo, do you kind of want to talk about that? Yeah. You can find us on Instagram, Twitter. We're primarily on Instagram, you know, the gram. Yeah, just comment, 
like, subscribe to us. Uh, we would love to talk to you guys about animes and all that stuff. We we just love to talk to people about anime and Let us know what anime you're binging. Yeah, like what you want us to do as well. Like if you guys want to do some different types of like episodes, different types of structure, if you guys want us to do like top tens and stuff. And, you know, what, whatever feedback, we, any feedback is great feedback at this point. So. Make sure you download this podcast, though. Yeah, we, we would love the little downloads. We normally wouldn't, we don't normally like talking about that kind of stuff, but it really helps us out to know what platforms you guys are listening to and where we should like focus more of our energy on and stuff. But yeah, we have a special treat for our next episode, something a little different than our normal reviews. Um, I'm really excited about it. Me I think too, you guys definitely. will like it a lot. We worked this way was, too it was hard. So hard on it. it was, <laughs> We okay. I am glad we spent the time we did on it, but we did spend a lot of time on it. Yes, we spent a lot more time on it and than I what thought, I thought we yeah, were going to spend for on sure. It. But that's for next time. Um, All right. Thanks for listening right. again. Have Bye. a great day. Bye-bye.